Welcome to Live at the Blue Box. It's now time for Binge Worthy. This is a special episode, different than we normally do. This one is season two's. It's, a, it's like an after school special. It is. I'm the siphon in the snow, yes. and with me is. Uh, that's a deep cut joke right yeah, there. Yeah, I got it, though. Uh, so here's what we're doing for, for Binge Worthy tonight. Normally, what we do is we take a show, we binge it out, and then we tell you whether it's binge worthy or not. Well, Martha had a great idea. Did I? You did. That's one. It was bound to happen eventually. Uh, she <laughs> said, since we binged out mul- the, the second season of a lot of these shows, let's go back and reapproach shows that we've already talked about and talk about what happened. Only is this, Netflix. Is the second season... But only from Netflix. Worthy. These okay. are all... These are all Netflix. Netflix, ex- Netflix exclusive shows. Okay. So... so. What shows are we going to talk about? All right. Do you, want to, do you want to start with the one that we liked the least? Sure. Get that out of the way? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... so and all of these did achieve binge-worthy. Yes. All of these we liked quite a bit. Um, We're going to start with one we didn't Well, like No, but I'm much. saying in the first season, they all achieved oh, binge-worthy absolutely. across the board. Them. Loved yes. them. This one, season two... Well, go well, ahead. Well, talk about it individually. So, um, Do you want to introduce yourself first? No. Okay. Go ahead. I am Martha Southgate, co-owner of Southgate Media Group. And I'm Rob Southgate, co-owner of Southgate Media Group. Okay. So uh, why don't we do Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt? Yes. So this one, uh, the second season aired April 15th of 2016. Okay. And it's 12 or 13 episodes. Uh, yeah. Somewhere in there. And I watched it with Ma, with Well, we all well, we, watched we it. We loved the first season. We thought it was a lot so of fun. So we were very excited to see this one. So we started watching and hated it. And I thought, oh, no, what is going on? I cannot stay. I can't even sit through it. Yeah, and it wasn't just a little hate. It was like by episode two, or I three. was out. And I never, right. I am never Can, out. Uh, the unbra- unbreakable, unbreakable Kimmy, Kimmy Schmidt. Schmidt. Just the second never, season. I am never out on a show. As I'm watching the second season, second episode, I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is mind-numbing. So he bailed yep. and didn't watch for a while. And then I, I kept going with Molly because she really liked it and wanted to keep watching. And, and I kept telling my friends I was so disappointed. Go over here. Go over here. Grab a mic. I was telling my friends, you know, I'm so disappointed in the new season. And they kept saying, just get to Tina Fey because Tina yes. Fey is going to be on and it will be okay. So she comes on halfway through the season. I actually liked the first bit. It, it was not that good, but it was okay. What I didn't like about it was in the, the first season, Kimmy was very naive, and she was, but she's smart. And in this season, they, they took that away and just made her an idiot. And yeah, so she was just she would, an idiot. She would say things like she'd go over to the oven and the oven was broken, you know, and she'd pull something out and go, so what do we use this for? I mean, it was just Yeah, it was like so it went beyond. Stupid. The idea in the first season is Kimmy got abducted when she was like 12 or 13 uh, and she uh, stuck yeah. there. 15. 15, but she stuck there. Because she so, was she was taken into she and these other girls were abducted and put in a bunker by John Ham. Yes, like, which is amazing. He's a crazy. He's uh, like a cult and he, leader, and he was a cult leader, and so he convinced them that the world had ended and they were only the only ones left. Right. And um and his name is like Gary Wayne. Gary. Yeah. Wayne. I don't yeah. know. He's got this but, crazy. But name. in the first season, she was supposed to be an adult woman stuck at like. 15. She's stuck in the very, 90s, very so her naive clothes and 15. Her, the phrases she says. And right. And it was funny. All in this of her one, references. They went, okay, she's that, but she's stupid. That's how yeah. it felt. And the other thing is they focused well, on Jacqueline. Is her name Jacqueline? Yeah. They focused on Jacqueline's story, which was fine in the first season. I didn't season, like it. But it was terrible mm-hmm. in the beginning of this. Terrible. Couldn't stand it. And yeah. they started a storyline and didn't finish it. Mm-hmm. They started one that was really weird, and then they ended it. Yeah, they just kind of dropped and then, it. At, like at the end of the episode, and you're like, oh, so this is the cliffhanger for the next episode. Right. And then the next episode, they didn't even mention it. Now, I will say the one saving grace in that first half of the season for me Titus. was Titus. Titus. Yeah. But And Mikey. When Titus doing, and I love Mikey. And Lillian. And Lillian. But, and oh my gosh, when he was doing playing the piano that but, had fleas in it. <laughs> bed bugs. Bed bugs. But, and, he is, and he was like, this is 
is from little orphan Tommy, the one that yeah. didn't make it. <laughs> the, the problem with those, and you're right, that was the saving grace, but if you watch the first season, Titus's storyline, Lillian's storyline, all the storylines were tied into Kimmy's. Mm -hmm. In this, it felt like Kimmy's doing her thing. And now we have, here's a storyline we could do with Titus that doesn't match that in any way, and it's a bunch of jokes. And here's Lillian's, and it's a bunch of jokes. And I was like, those are, those are okay. They were funny, but it just didn't seem cohesive. I didn't like it. Well, Lillian with the hipsters was killing Oh, me. yes. So I went and to then bed like, and coming. said, I'm done. <laughs> Yeah. And then they so stayed up and binged going, some more. No, no. But we, we watched for... for yeah, we you, finished you it out. You binged a couple more episodes and you came up and you're like, mm, you yeah. wanted to be out of this. It was bad. And then they, Molly was dying. She kept wanting to watch it. So Martha would watch it with her. Because it's Kimmy. I'm like, this has to get better. And then one night you guys binged it and Tina. you came up and said... You need to watch as the Tina Fey episode. As soon as Tina Fey came on, she plays a drunk therapist. And she's, she's um, Kimmy picks her up in an Uber. Kimmy's an Uber driver. No, at some she point. isn't. She actually isn't. She, she is like, these defy the fake Uber law, laws that I made up. Because she pretends to be one. Yes. And just take pockets Molly the money. has the show memorized. <laughs> she doesn't even. She makes references that are unbelievable. I have no idea. Okay. And like they do fake songs in it. She knows every song and she'll just like start singing them. You're like, what is yeah. that from? Oh, it's I'm from Kimmy. I'm convinced I can swim. No, but we're not allowed yeah. to do that. Yeah. So. Um, I, I said nothing. Yeah. So anyway, once Tina Fey comes on, she's on for the second half of the season and the pacing, everything seems to change and it is... Oh, yeah. It is uh, salvaged for me, but it is nothing compared to season one. Right. Although, if you take out that first half of the season and watch just the second half, it's a little weaker, but it, it still stood. But you know, it yeah. stood enough that I'm ready for season three. Yeah. But Whereas it, that first half, I was out. When I was looking it up to research today, the reviews are good. Wow. People really liked it, and a lot of people liked it better. But you know what? With sitcoms, so, a lot of times people uh, like these terrible sitcoms, and they'll get good reviews, and you're like, it's not funny. Yeah. It doesn't make sense what, what people are going for. I think, oh, it's a Tina Fey project, and I'm just naturally going to think this is all amazing. Well, it's not. Tina Fey is great. I really like Tina Fey. That doesn't mean the first half of the season was worth no, anything. No, it was not good. It was not good. So, okay, so do we, do we keep our... our same rating from last season? No. I say you. for me, mm -hmm. first season stays Binge the same. Binge the heck out Binge of it. Binge it. Second season, it's worth the watch. It's I'm worth gonna the watch. I'm going to drop it down to worth the watch. But I'm, I'm telling you, watch out. The first half is not good. You're gonna, you might watch it and think it's okay, but it gets, by Kathleen, it gets significantly, <laughs> by Marlene, <laughs> Uh, it gets Mary, I don't think that was her name. Yeah, it was. Uh, it gets significantly... I think you just made up her name. Okay. It it's gets Marlene. Okay. Yeah, it gets significantly better in the second half. And at that point, go ahead and binge the last half. But that first half, just space it out. Just watch. Endure it. Yeah. Oh, and works. actually, we've made it sound so awful that you'll probably love it. Yeah, and go, what were they say, talking about? Yeah, but compared to what we're going to get to, I'd say it's yeah. worth the watch. It's worth the watch. What do you say, Mel? I want to say binge it. Because, no, because you have to binge it in a night. So you have to get through. And what? That's 13 hours? It's like, no, I don't know. Well, that would and be six day. hours. That's a, a lot of hours. So, but you have to get through that first, so, that so, first half quickly and then move on to the second so half. So take the bullet. Start early. Take the bullet of the first and half. And just power through the first half. And then once six. you get to Tina Fey, know that you're going to be in for the rest of the night binging. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. That's not bad. I say binge. I say uh, I, I say it's do worth it. the watch, but yeah, I couldn't. But do I it. didn't love it. It's not as good as season one. No. Yes, yeah, season one was way better, but it's, all right. Yeah, you have to binge it to get through that first bit. So there oh, we boy. go. The Tina Fey episode. Thanks, honey. The, there's a couple of them, and the one it, the the, yeah, the first okay. one she's on is amazingly yes. funny. She's so funny it in that. It changes the whole pacing of the show. Yes. Say okay. What you were saying with, you got a camera right with them making Kimmy really dumb, well, actually, 
she wasn't really brought up by her mom, so she could. She also didn't really know what things were, too. Well, right, but they they made her no, especially she was, dumb. She was much smarter in season one. Yeah, yeah. she was naive and didn't know things. Naive but in is the big one, di- she is a big stupid. difference from stupid. Yeah. Right. All right. So. Well done. Thank you. All right, season two, let's move on. All right, let's do um, Grace and Frankie. Grace and Frankie. Okay. Season two, when did it hit? It just hit recently, right? um, I didn't write that down. It hit recently. Doesn't matter. Like May or June or something. I don't know, recently. Yeah, May or June. Mm, I don't know. It was so good. and um, It actually might have been, I I, I don't know if I want to say better than the first season. Different. It was a little different. but it was it evolved. so good. It evolved so much more, and and the I love what they're doing with their the fact that they're women and they're older. Yeah, and they're they're um, gets my mom's vote. But it's true. It is true, and. And the things that they talk about, and the th- and they they take all these taboo subjects, and they just put it right out there and go, look, this is the fact. This is how we live. This is what it is. And um, it's so I love so that. well. It's acted so well. It is, and it introduces Sam Elliott this season. Yeah, Sam Elliott was love. great. And um, something that's interesting is Marta Kaufman, who she was the executive producer and writer and everything for Friends. She is the executive producer and co-creator of this show. Oh, really? So it's kind of interesting. So for anyone who's, who's a fan of Friends, it follows that sort of um, her, her style where she takes... Uh, a story and she finishes it out in that episode but then she also has another overarching story that goes on that's that's her the style that's kind of that's her, she this does woman's it? style and the fact that she has this ensemble cast that is outstanding it really is and and then she has all these storylines now it did for me my least favorite storyline is the stuff with um uh Sam Waterson Sam and, and, and with the two guys. And it's just because they're, I just don't find those characters as appealing as the other characters. Right. I love right. the kids. I love all the kids. And I love well, I Grace this, and Frankie. The second season, the first season, they were very uh, equal. The two, the women's story and the men's story. They were tied together. It was very equal. The second season, I think that, that the guy's story had a trajectory that was kind of one note. It was, mm-hmm. it was one thing we were waiting to see resolved through most of it. Whereas for the women, we had, we had another story going we on. We had so many stories. That, 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 yeah, we did. And then yeah. think about it. If you think, when I think about the show, I really, really got wrapped up in the last part. Yeah. When, when their friend was there. Well, and, and, and with Frankie, when she was... When and, Frankie, and what's her name? She was the one that was the mom on Roseanne. And... Yeah, I love oh her. Oh my gosh, she was that great. That was but the also the um the storyline of Frankie with working with Brianna. With Brianna and That was uh, excellent. to put out a product. Yes. And that killed me. I mean, watching that now, whole process and and her and do I Do you think that there is something cuz they have Brianna dating the uh, the accountant from yeah, the, and the I business. Yeah, I love that guy. But do you think there's something between I think that next season we're going to see Bud and Brianna because they have a flirtation that seems a little above. I think that's going to happen. I do. I thought it the whole time, this whole season. I didn't think it the first season. I thought they were friends, but did they're, you get but that? But they're almost like siblings. I know, that's a but, they're, weird. but that doesn't matter because uh, Coyote was in love with the other, with the sister. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. I well, thought, that'll be interesting. I like her with the accountant, though. I, I do too. But I think they, I think they balanced things mm-hmm. differently this time. Last season was better as far as we had the boys, we had the daughters, yeah. we had the husbands, we had the wives. This time, it seemed they had two main storylines, which was Grace and Frankie's, and the husbands. Mm-hmm. And the husbands was kind of one note. Grace and Frankie's had a lot of elements to it. And that tied into the daughters and tied into the Yeah, sons. it was it was it was very but I, I mean it's an ex- I think it's an exceptional show. I think next season we'll probably see a, a focus shift although it's always got to be about Grace and Frankie. Yes. Um not just because it's named that. It's really got to stay about them, especially 
Frankie. It, yeah. It's especially got to be Frankie because yeah. she is in. But they balance each show. other so well. Yes. They just and I Jane love. Fonda is great on and it, I love that Frankie Jane is Jane Fonda doesn't. It, neither one of them has a character that just stays a caricature like no they have there's there's always something evolving and and um and they i just i just think it's brilliant love it and and it, i did like how there was a lot of throwback to the first season like you, yeah. you got storylines that were picked up little threads mm-hmm. um you're starting to really feel like you know these people uh when the season ended i don't know about you but i i was sorry to see it end because you do feel like I really know them. Yeah, I want to hang. I want to hang. I don't with just them. want to know what happens next. I feel like I know them. Yeah. And, and I, I want Lily Tomlin to just come over. Yeah, after the first she's the greatest. One, after the first season, I was truly in, like it was morning. Right. I was I was so sad. What am I going to do without them? Yeah. Yeah, and I was like I want to stay there. I love where they live. I love what they do. I love the stories. I love the people and That's how I feel so about the next show we're going to talk one. about. Yeah, I love their clothes. I love their house. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Grace and Frankie, the first season we gave it binge a binge the heck. The heck. Out of it. Yeah. Do you do it again? Binge the heck out of it. I do too. And you know what? Go back and binge the first season and rewatch it with the second it's season. It's so good. It's such yeah. a good show. So yeah, good. Scott. It's on Netflix. Netflix. It's a Netflix exclusive, and yeah. it's it's outstanding. And you know, when I when I watch this show, I have a feeling that I don't think this show was ever pitched. To anything but like a Netflix, it, it it at first I thought okay this is kind of like kind of like a TV show but it was different. Mm-hmm. I think it, it's one of those shows that's kind of defining what a a I, I hesitate to call it a comedy, mm-hmm. but what, what it is funny it is yeah. a comedy. But I, I think but it, it kind everything. of defines what like Netflix can take this show and the idea of this show. I don't mean using these actors or whatever or using the same storyline. I mean the the idea of we're going to break the mold, we're going to make it human, it's not jokey, but we can make it really funny and use real actors and like they don't mm-hmm. have to, the budget can't be big for sets or anything. They've got three locations mm-hmm. and that's it. But it, what they do with it is just great and I think this is a prototype they could work with. Yeah, You know, and- don't give me Fuller House again do this kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, and the, the first season had that little bit of a drag in the beginning as you're trying to get used to the characters and yes. kind of adjust to the storyline, but oh, then once you're in, you that just... The first season in the beginning was so yeah. uncomfortable. Oh. But you can't stop watching. Once you get right. into it, a few episodes, you're like, then you get hooked. That's so. another thing I liked in this season. They didn't let the two husbands off the hook because no. the husbands turned out to be gay and they left the wives, and that's yeah. the premise of the show. Yeah. And in the second season, they could have easily done what most shows do, which is pretty much get past that because, okay, that plot device is over, and now we move into... No, they're still upset with them. Mm-hmm. When things happen, they still make references like, like when you cheated on me for, well, for 20 and what years. They're trying, and it's like, it's really well done. And what they're trying to do so much of the time is, is, is set their boundary. But they're tra- you could see that they're working their way trying to figure out what that boundary needs to be now. Because after 40 years of marriage. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so, so you'll see them going, oh, but I want to help him. And then it's like, but where do I help? And when is it, when is it too much? And when do I do this? And, and so you, they don't broadcast it they don't sit there and, and harp on it but you feel that through it with that they're really working on how do we start over from this and who are we now and and there's just so much depth to the character and I, I love it yeah I, I love it too and you know one other and thing about it is about not it, appropriate for Molly which is why she no. hasn't run up here yet to and say yeah the other thing yeah it's not there appropriate for kids not appropriate but I'll, I'll also say that so the cast is older, right? And, and this is something you don't get to see. Usually if it's older people on a show, they're in they're an authority position. Or they're, like they're not the, the, ma- or or the, the grandparents. grandparents. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not in a human role. Mm-hmm. And these are, these are very human. They're real. Yeah, they're, they're totally real. real. And, and they're believable. And 
when I think about a sitcom that, that uses older people, the, the one that immediately comes to mind is like Golden Girls, which to me was like an old person show. I've even tried to watch it recently, and you're like, the jokes are for old people. And the young people I knew that liked it, I don't know why they liked it. It's not, I don't think it's that funny. This... Olivia is going to hunt you down but now. But this, this, I think, is not. Yeah. I think that, that our niece in her early 20s could watch this and get just as much enjoyment as we do. Because it's not or like you're watching you it going, yeah. oh, it's a bunch of jokes that my grandparents would get. <laughs> it's that they would watch it and go... Wow, these are people. I get this. I, I get yeah, this. I, I know them, so, and so I felt yeah. that way, and I do So, yeah, I wasn't married for 20 years right. and had 40, a... 40. Yeah, 40 years. But that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Yeah. So, I absolutely, 100% Grace and Frankie. Yeah. Okay. We got one more. So, binge the heck out of it. Binge the heck out of it. Okay. And now I know the Salmons have to go home and binge the heck out of it. So, the It's last really worth one. it. It's so good. Get Last a few one. episodes in. Fight yeah. through the first three, you know, just to get a handle on the characters. Trust us, we wouldn't rave about it unless it was this good. Right. Right. So all right. Last, all right. Last one, one, one is Daredevil. Binge worthy two. Daredevil season two. Okay, we got Charlie Cox. Charlie Cox is Deborah back Ann as Daredevil. Wall. Yep. Eldon Henson. Yep. So those are your three. Those are Daredevil and his. Foggy, Part, Foggy and, and Karen. Karen. Then uh, John Bernthal's in this season as Punisher. Elodie Young is uh, Electra. Electra. And Stephen Ryder is Blaine Ta- Blake Tower. And Rosario Dawson, I love. Back is the she's, well, been, she's the night nurse, but she's, she's not. She's in it very little, but, she, she, but I love her. And, and here's the interesting thing: in the first season, we we uh, being a big Marvel fan, I recognized her character as the night nurse. It's a character who is a nurse. Who, At night. As these, well, yeah, as, as these superheroes, these street level superheroes, not like Thor, but the guys who like, they put Daredevil. on a costume, they may not have much yeah. of, well, they don't really have superpowers. He does a little bit, mm-hmm. but they, they like are fighting vigilantes. They get beat up, they get cut and bruised and yeah. hurt. And she, in her off hours, helps these guys. Yes. She, and in the comics, that's who she is. So here's the interesting thing. Oh, I was not. I had one more. Well, but here's the interesting okay. about the night nurse. So we watched that first season. They never named Checker as the night nurse. Mm-hmm. All of us that are Marvel fans are like, it's the night nurse, and she was great. Now, with the way Marvel works is once they cast somebody. So like the guy playing Daredevil, Charlie Cox. If they use Daredevil in the movie, he's Daredevil. Mm-hmm. That's what they've said. The characters in their universe are the characters and that's it you don't get to play a different character and somebody doesn't replace you as that character Mm -hmm. unless it's a full replacement they cast somebody as the night nurse coming up in one of the movies uh oh so she's not the night nurse interesting isn't that interesting we might find out next season I have a feeling that that she's just supposed to be like the night helper or she she is the night nurse but they're going to have a, a character that a, they an call official night an nurse. official night nurse, and she'll stay in the role she's in. I have a feeling. But I think that's really interesting. It is. Then we got Vincent D'Onofrio back yes. for a tiny, tiny yes. fraction of a So moment. he was the kingpin in the first season. He's the big bad. In this one, we don't get him till like, episode eight. And I will never look at those shoes the same <laughs> way. <laughs> Well, yeah, I go because, through Target and I'm like, Ugh, Kingpin shoes. Yeah, because Kingpin, he's in jail. He's yeah, in jail, he's and they shoes. give him, you know, the jail, the slip-on shoes. Are you wearing them? No, no. You should have worn them. He's wearing them, and yeah, you. It's it's even more so than Orange is the New Black, because in yeah. Orange is the New Black, they have them too. I didn't even notice until he but wore them. He and wears like, them, and you're like, it's unsettling. And I got a pair, and I'm yeah. like, oh, they're the Kingpin shoes. Yeah. He's in it just a little bit, but oh man. Now there's another example. Supposedly. D'Onofrio is going to be in one of these upcoming Marvel movies as the Kingpin. See, there you go. So, so there were 13 episodes, and it aired March 18th of, of this year, of 2016. And um, uh, Doug Petrie and Marco Ramirez replaced Stephen S. Denight as showrunner. So different. Where are you going? Is that better? We were getting no audio on here. Go ahead. Talk. Who? You. Well, I didn't know who you were talking to. I didn't know. Like, um, 
So I didn't know how it would be with a whole new sh- with new showrunners because a lot of times that changes the whole tone. But they were writers on season one, and they worked really closely with the other showrunner and the creator. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, and um, so they so it was. I thought it was seamless. I couldn't tell the difference between the two. No, I really seasons. couldn't either. Although I will say something, um, and I am. I mean, spoiler. Daredevil is in my top t- tier of superheroes. I love Daredevil comics. Mm-hmm. I love this show so much. This is another one. I, I, I feel remorse when it's over. Like, it's over. Mm-hmm. I gotta wait. I love Daredevil so much. And I love it, but I've never but read the comics. Season two. My first foray. I didn't know it was a different showrunner. There was. The tone and everything was the same. But I am going to say... It's kind of like in the Iron Man movies. The first Iron Man is an amazing movie, right? Yeah. The first season of Daredevil is for TV what Iron Man is to the movies. It's like this top tier. It's a, it's a universe builder. Boom. Yes. Iron Man 2 got a lot of heat. It was, I liked it, but it got a lot of heat because they were trying to do universe building. They were throwing in characters to try to tell you, look, there's going to be all these characters coming up in these other properties. This had Punisher. This had Elektra. Uh, and they were right up in your face. And they also made some illusions that you didn't catch, but I'm going, oh, I see where certain storylines are probably going to go because I read the comics. I think that I think they shoehorned a little bit. I didn't need Elektra in this one, and I love the Elektra character. I, she was the weakest part for me. They should have waited, and d- instead of having two other mm-hmm. characters, do Matt and the Punisher... Yeah. And tell me a Matt story, but have the Punisher in a few, and then in the next season do the Matt and Electra yeah, storyline, which was, is amazing. Because I, th- I felt it was like it in. was it was sort of wedged in, and it was it was muddled. It was um, a bit. It was still the season was still equally <laughs> right. for me as good as the first one, but that was first season that was, was the five weakest stars. Part. This was four and a half. Four and a half, and and Electra was just a. And it wasn't that I didn't like Electra. It right. wasn't that I didn't like. Her, you know that she was in it. It was that I didn't like that it was so. Um, who are you giving a thumbs I, up to? Audio is working again. Okay. So um, I didn't like that. I, I felt like it was um, a bit muddied. Yeah. No, I agree. I mean, it 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 definitely. And and I don't want to sound like a downer because I would go home and watch. Yeah, it was brilliant. It right now. It was. I love Daredevil so much. I think that that. The other thing I felt, which is my other negative comment, is I didn't feel like we had enough focus on Daredevil. And the reason is, once again, they wedged in the Electra story. Mm -hmm. The other thing about the Electra story is... Now, see, I can't tell you what happens. No, because you can't spoil it. But I can tell you... Like, while they were doing, while the show, you know, the show hits, and right away, Netflix, and the popularity of Punisher was like, whoosh. It was all over the internet, all over social media. People loved Barenthal as the Punisher. Who didn't see it coming? Barenthal. Who didn't see this coming? They gave Punisher. He's going to have his own series in a couple of years or next year or something. No big shocker there, right? I'll be there. Electra, that didn't happen with. It's not because of the storyline, though. I don't know. And the actress did a great job mm-hmm. in that character. I think they just muddied the water a hair. Mm-hmm. They, they hit... See, lightning struck they when they did Daredevil. Fast, yeah. when, lightning struck with Daredevil. And, and they didn't know it was going to be that popular, so they ended up putting in a second series of Daredevil in that first wave. It was supposed to be Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and then a Defenders series. Daredevil hit. They give it a second season after Jessica Jones. Mm-hmm. Now they've got Punisher in there and Jessica Jones gets a second season and it's like, wait a minute, you've got all these series. Now, the thing I just read is I believe they are going to three shows a year instead of two. Okay. That gives them a little space to do this with. Uh, Maybe we will see something more with Elektra. Mm -hmm. Maybe the next Daredevil season or in two seasons we'll get that Daredevil Electra storyline that I'm dying for because it's so rich and so good 
and it's going to rip your heart Well, I hope they don't mush it in with another storyline. Well, they also affected the relationship with Karen. Yes. Which, that drove me nuts. Yes. But that is, that's another thing. The, the relationship of, of Daredevil and Karen is, is almost like a tragic Superman and Lois. You know, it's like it's this tragic storyline that goes in and out. And in this show, it went in and then it kind of fell apart and it didn't end in a way that made you go, oh my gosh. It made you go, okay, Karen's going to be the next time and will they, won't they is going to kind of come back. I don't know. Mm-hmm. To me, these are tiny missteps, but once again, we're talking four and a half out of five stars, maybe four and three quarters out of yeah. five stars. I do and, love it. Um, something to keep in mind is Jeff Loeb, who's the head of Marvel. Yes. He said, if season one was really about Matt's decision to become a hero, then season two really became about what it is to be a hero. So he gets That's faced. True. The whole time he's getting faced with oh, am I a good guy or am I a bad guy? And, and how do I define what it is? Which is great. Which because is with of Punisher, the Punisher and Electra. And it also, he does start this relationship with Karen. Spoiler, I, I don't care if I spoil that. Well, that part's not. I mean, anyone but, who knows Daredevil. But that is part of the hero's journey too. Mm-hmm. Because he, at some point, has to like, go, you're going to get hurt. Mm-hmm. I can't have relationships. And that's that's a classic Marvel storyline. They they did it with Spider Man over and over. They did it with Daredevil over and over. And here we saw it play Mulder out. Mulder and Scully. And I'm okay with it. I am okay yeah. with it. I I love it. I mean, you can already tell this is a binge it. This is binge it. Go back and watch season one. Binge that. Yes. Binge that. And go back and watch Jessica Jones again, just because they make a reference to it in this. And I got all excited. And I'm just I can't wait for Luke Cage. Yes. Luke Cage is going to be amazing. Binge it. Binge, binge it. the heck out. Binge worthy. Is that it? Yep. All right. Well, that's it for our season two special of binge worthy. At least the first of those. I'm sure we'll do more. Uh, next binge worthy. I'm already putting it down. We're going to do shameless. Oh no. We're going to do shameless oh. because Martha and I have done more than one season. We're about to. Fin- we're going to. We're going to go into season five, yeah. and uh, I think it's worth talking about. All right. I think we've got a lot to discuss with with Shameless, though, because you don't know if we're going to say actually binge it or not. You don't. All right. Uh, <laughs> we got a lot to say. Um, that's it. Well, Martha, you got any any last words? No. Binge right. it. Binge it. Uh, if you enjoyed the show, you want to uh, support us, you can find us. It's Southgate Media Group. We're on Patreon, and uh, we do it by the month rather than by the episode because we produce hundreds of shows a month. Uh, for as little as a dollar, you can subscribe for one dollar a month, and that makes a big difference. You can do more if you want to. I'm not cutting you off at a dollar. Uh, and uh, also, if you shop on Amazon, if you go to our website, click on the Amazon link there. It puts a cookie on your computer for 24 hours, and anything you buy on Amazon, after you click on that, we get a tiny commission for, which is a way to support us without costing you a dime. You can even use your Amazon Prime. Doesn't doesn't matter. Uh, I think that's it. Go to our website, SouthgateMediaGroup.com. Follow me on Twitter at our Southgate. Follow the company, Martha, at SMG Pods. Uh, find us on Pinterest. We have Pinterest boards for everything now. And find us on Instagram. Just look up Southgate Media Report on all that social media. And uh, find us on YouTube. All these go on YouTube. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Internet. Thank you, Blue Box. 